the radical love of your people on my left and on my right, that they see you like they've never seen you before. The song of their heart being the response to the song that the Father is singing over them. That you're bringing them into places of worship. It's bringing forth a new joy and a fresh oil. I thank you for the person on my left and on my right that are people the Father you are seeking after. Those that worship you in spirit and in truth. And I thank you for once that the Father seeks standing on my left and on my right. God, I thank you for a new season. I thank you for a new season. A new song. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, God, I thank you for the greatest blessing of all, and that's you, that you draw me, I will run after you, oh God. Like David said in Psalm 63, that your love is it's better than life, that you, oh God. And the song of the redeemed is so much more. God, I thank you for a song of praise that we've poured out here tonight. With this breath in our lungs, we pour out our praise. And this is who we are. We are worshipers. We are worshipers. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Would you love on somebody around you? Love on the worshiper around you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. So much happens in places of worship. Gateway, greater glory was founded. A house of worship. A healing center and a filling station of his glory. That was our beginnings. That is who we are. And that is what God has called us to be. And in worship, we may start with a song, but it's far more than a song that we sing. In John chapter 4, you find this woman right at the well, and she was there at the time of day when most people would not draw because of the heat. She comes in contact with a man. Her reputation everybody knew about. But she came in contact with a man. She was having a fight in her life of not knowing what it was like to really be loved. From one broken relationship to the next, from one failed marriage to the next, we find that she's at a place And there's a reason why there's coming forth a place of worship out of this conversation. There's a reason why that Jesus said the Father is seeking those that would worship him. In spirit and in truth. Because in a church service, it could be full of people singing, but not everybody's worshiping. And places of worship... There could be a lot of songs, but 
Where are the worshipers? There's something different than singing a song and somebody who is worshiping. And he's bringing forth saying the Father seeks those that would worship him in spirit and in truth for multiple reasons. Obviously because we, we, we touch who he is and there's something about when we see him for who he really is, we find out who we really are. There's something that when I see him for who he is, somehow the, the only natural response is I know who I am, who I was created to be before the foundations of the earth. All this happens because in these moments of worship, my heart is touching his heart and I'm getting recalibrated with my heart, with the heart of heaven. And, and I, I, you, you feel those moments of, oh my gosh, I know, I understand now. Even though I don't understand what God's doing, I can understand. And he's bringing forth a place of worship because she was somebody who, who was fighting with her identity. She was somebody that knew how to argue. Her defense was she could argue with the best. But we've all experienced when we've argued with God and lost. Amen. But the Father seeks for a reason those that would worship in spirit and in truth. Paul and Silas shows us plainly that a place of worship is not about the atmosphere or the circumstances that I'm in. They even know that Paul and Silas were beaten and chained in the inner prison. It didn't stop their song from being sung. And even though it, everything didn't feel right, and when they didn't have the worship team playing the song that they really liked that would get them into the glory, it didn't matter because they produced their own song. With no worship team there, they produced a song in the midst of prison with shackles. So maybe they couldn't raise their arms, but they could raise their hearts. Pain of the beating, and in spite of their pain, they brought forth a praise and a worship. And as a result, we find that these worshipers, that there was a, an earthquake where the gates were opened up, and it wasn't about getting out of prison, but there was going to be a supernatural salvation to the household of, of the head jailer of this prison. Hmm. You know, that might make them think twice about beating Christians and imprisoning them when the whole jail collapsed. I don't know. That's a pretty cool thought, isn't it? They showed that worship isn't defined by how I feel, nor by the circumstances that I'm in. And when the atmosphere is dark, that I can produce a song that changes the atmosphere. Now, please understand what I'm saying. If you can't carry a tune, I'm not saying sing loud at work because they're being hateful to you. You understand, please. <laughs> worship. The Father seeks those that will worship. David danced before the presence of God. David danced for the, before the presence of God in such a way that all his garments that showed his authority, his position, his splendor, his everything of who he was as a king came off of him in the place of worship. And he danced before the presence of God in such a way that he didn't care about what he looked like because he wasn't focused on himself. He was in a place of worship and of praise. His wife even was not too happy with him because of his worship. And he worshiped and he worshiped. But that's because in that moment, he understood what the presence of God bringing back to Israel was all about. Before he was ever king, he was a worshiper that in such a way that when King Saul was tormented, he said, I must get me a psalmist. And somebody came and said, here's somebody that when he plays, 
things change. And in comes the shepherd boy before a king that begins to worship before God that the tormenting spirits could not stay and left at the place of worship. He understood about the places of worship before he ever danced with the king's robe. But he set aside his shepherd's rod and began to sing in such a way that it would change the atmosphere and people knew. And I don't know. He obviously had a reputation that he could play a harp pretty good. He must have had a pretty good voice. And more than the song, uh, the sound of it, but when he did it, the spirit of the Lord would come. And when the Spirit of the Lord comes, because he rests, because he's looking for that place. The Holy Spirit is referred to throughout Scripture as a dove, right? And so when, um, when, when Noah was trying to make sure that there was a place to land, right, uh, when he released to make sure the waters had receded enough to where there was a place to land. That the spirit of the living God looks for places to rest and land upon people's hearts and lives. And it comes through places of worship. Elisha knew the power of it. Elisha. Elisha was such a powerful prophet. Elisha was the predator, right? He, he, he was there and walked with Elijah and saw the supernatural incredible before his very eyes. And after he saw Elijah taken up in a whirlwind and chariots of fire, we see in his life that he was able to walk in a double portion of what Elijah walked in. Now that's not easy. He walked in a double portion, and we could see that in a certain time when he needed an answer from God and to see God move. And what did he do? He said, get me a minstrel. He got a minstrel that, began to sing, that, that they brought forth the harp and began to sing before the Lord. And it said that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Elisha. And Elisha was waiting for the Spirit to come upon him to begin to see heaven move. Now, Elisha, wow, Elisha saw the dead raised to life of the boy. Elisha was there to be able to see in the widow's life of supernatural oil that began to be produced. There was supernatural oil that was come forth out of his ministry, which if we weren't going to go fellowship, we could spend some time tonight. And the definition and the meaning of oil that went beyond, obviously, in that day, it was the burning of their lamps. It was a place of the anointing oil that was placed upon kings, placed upon the anointing places of prophets, the precious anointing oil. But she needed an abundant supply. That made no sense. But Elisha had a divine strategy of wisdom that didn't make sense to produce oil for the widow. You know, this morning we were um, dealing with worship. We've been a day of worship. But God just brought you, just highlighted you this morning. And, um, you know, the, the Father seeks, and, and uh, he has seen your faithfulness. He's seen your faithfulness. And it's been something that's been a blessing in the courts of heaven. And there is a blessing of the faithfulness that's coming into your life. Let me see your hand. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the blessing of oil in our life, oh God. The faithfulness of the heart that stands in the midst of chaos and question. One that stands and produces one that prays. One who's faithful, not just in attending, but faithful in the work of the ministry. One who opens up the mouth 
And a sharp two-edged sword comes from her mouth. One who prays and allowing heaven to operate and to move. And I just saw the blessing. I just felt that the blessing of the Father's heart over you and your faithfulness and over your life. And as a result of this faithfulness, there is a blessing coming into your life. And I asked God, and I didn't get anything more about it, but I know it's good. God, I thank you for the oil. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Elisha brought forth a minstrel because he knew what it was uh, about the importance of worship and the prophetic ministry. Prophets of hope. And sure, we may start off with a song, but John showed us on the island of Patmos what happens when you find yourself in the spirit on the Lord's day. John loved the Lord with all of his heart. He had a lifestyle of worship, of being in the spirit. And I love because in this moment, like we do in places of worship, it may start with the song, but he just, he heard the sound. He heard the one as a voice of trumpets. He didn't see anything, but he heard something. Have you ever heard something in worship? Have you ever heard others singing besides those that are in the sanctuary? I have. We've heard songs that are being sung. I've heard instruments that weren't on the platform. And John turned to see the sound of the voice that he heard. And he gave the description, a voice of trumpets, the voice of many waters. Listen to the descriptions. And he knew Jesus. As the Messiah, he knew Jesus as the suffering Savior on the cross, but he was about to get the amazing revelation of the soon coming King. And as we start off and just singing songs of worship and love and adoration, it may be something that you hear or something that you see, but something brings you beyond the song that you're singing. And in this becomes this revelation of pure worship. James says that chapter 4, 8, that when you draw nigh unto God, he draws nigh unto you. And so as you sing a song, And the reason why I'm speaking of worship, because I believe with all my heart, he's bringing us, just like we said tonight, into a place of intimacy and into a place of worship at a greater dimension. And I'm not just talking, I'm not talking about the sanctuary. I'm talking about in your homes. I'm talking about in your life. Lord, this is our heart's desire. That we be people that you're looking for. That we have hearts that worship you beyond a song. That we can see a greater beauty of your holiness. And Lord, we say yes and thank you for developing us and to the worshipers. that are worship in spirit and truth. And everybody who agrees with that said yes and amen. Lord, I thank you for raising up worshipers. Not that we're not already. It sounds like I'm preaching to the choir, right? We're Sunday night. We worship week in and week out, but there's something happening that's, I'm not, I'm not going to say different, but it's more. And so John 
starts off on that island not knowing where he was going to go that day. And as we, as we continue with doing what we do, but there's going to be something more in the places of our worship. You're going to have to pull over to the side of the road because the song is becoming more than a song. And your worship and the tears are streaming and it's, not, it's, it's tears of joy, not of pain or depression. Laying on your pillow, streaming, and as David said in Psalm 63, is the meditations of the night watches. Uh, my heart's meditating upon you. Tears coming down your cheek at nighttime. Not tears of anguish, stress. Not tears of loneliness, but tears of joy. Because as a worshiper, we get to go beyond the veil. And God, I thank you for bringing us, taking us by the hand, beyond the veil. And I thank you as a result, the enemy's going to flee. Supernatural salvation to our loved ones, our family members. Paul and Silas saw supernatural salvation. Philip saw it, uh, even stepping onto a chariot and then trans laid, transported to another place. Supernatural things happening. And not because of effort of us shouting louder, praying harder, but out of the natural stepping into that place of worship, seeing something happen. That's so beautiful. And somehow in all of it, we find our identity greater than we realized before. Not because I'm looking for it, but because I'm seeing him with scales falling off of our eyes. <laughs> we see him. Not as a man beholding in a mirror that walks away and forget what manner of man that he is. But as the one that looks into the light and sees the beauty of who he is. And it changes you in the process. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us beyond the veil of worship. And that's our heart's desire. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, maybe if the ushers... Uh, just bring buckets up here tonight. I gotta tell you, tonight was so beautiful. As we poured out our breath and we poured out our praise. As we pour out our praise before Him. seeking worshipers spirit and truth into places of worship. To your heart's desire. To bring us into the places that we meet at the seeking place where the Father is seeking those who would worship. That we people be people of spirit and of truth. We thank you for the blessing of the seeds and the tithes and the offering tonight. We thank you for the blessings of the food that we're getting ready to receive in fellowship. Would you bless the food?
there's anybody that has any special prayer request, pastors and ministry team will be here tonight at this altar as we worship. Stand to your feet.